Hello, uh, welcome back. Okay, so here we are back on this bivariate distribution and covariance problem. We have already uh, put together our bivariate probability distribution for part A, and we already calculated for parts B and C the expected value and the variance for both quality and price. So what we're going to do now, we're on to part D. We're gonna compute the variance uh, of X plus Y. And this is, uh, we're gonna use a little bit of a trick for this. I think it's a trick. I've seen it done before, so it's nothing unique that I'm, that I'm putting together, but we're gonna define a new variable. Um, so instead of calculating variable uh, variance X plus Y, here we're gonna calculate the variance of S where S is equal to X plus Y. So it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't look like we're doing anything fancy. We're just replacing this uh, summation of two values by, by one. Uh, but it makes the calculations a little bit easier. Now we just have to define what are the different values that this new variable S uh, can take. So S is equal to X plus Y. So we just go through what are the values that X can take and add them to the values that Y can take. So let's start off X, uh, X is equal to one. So if X is equal to one, what are the possible values for X plus Y? Well, we have one plus one. So that means that S can be a value of two. That would be the smallest value uh, for S. Again, if X is equal to one, uh, Y can be two. So there we have a value for S is three. And of course, if S, uh, if X is one, Y can be three. So now we have a value for S of four. So we just go through all of the possible pairings and we'll get to the next one. If X is two, what can Y be? Well, if, uh, Sorry, if X is two, what can S be? Well, Y can be one, so two plus one is three. Well, we already have three. Oops, three. So we don't need uh, we don't need to write three again. Uh, S plus uh, two plus two can, is four. We already have four, so we don't need to include that. But then we have this possible pairing here, two plus three. Uh, so S can also have the value of five. Now we move on to x is equal to three, if I get my pens in order. So if x is equal to three, okay, well if x is three and y is one, well there's four, we already have four here. Three plus two is five, we already have five. Three plus three is six, okay, there's a new value for s, so s can also be six. So those are all of the possible values that our new variable s can take, either uh, two, three, four, five, or six. So the next step, now we need to calculate what are the frequencies uh, associated with that new variable S. So here, we'll look at, if S is equal to two, uh, what are the corresponding frequencies for those combination of values for X and Y that give us a value of two? Well, in this case, the only way that S can be equal to two is when both X and Y are equal to one. So the relevant probability here for an S value of two is 0.07. Now, where can S be equal to three? S can be equal to three when X is one and Y is two, and also when X is two and Y is one. So those are the two possible combinations of X and Y values that can give us an S value of three. So we just need to add those two values together. So that gives us 0.12. And we do the same calculation for four. Where can S equal four? Three plus one, two plus two, and one plus three. So again, we just add these probabilities together and what we have, 2933.33. Moving on, where is S equal to five? Three plus two and two plus three. So here's a value of 0 
And where is s equal to 6? There's only one location or one combination of values for x and y where s is equal to 6. And so this gives us our last uh, frequency is 0.18. So we have our s values, we have the frequencies associated with s. Now we need to just multiply these two together. Our, our expected value that we're working up to here, this is the expected value for s, it's the same calculation that we've done when we obtain the expected value of x and y individually, and similarly, the same calculation for getting the variance. It's just the weighted average, uh, and except in this case, it, the variable of interest is s. So our next step, oh, uh, yeah, our next step here, we're just going to multiply those two columns together. I'll get my calculator here because I hate making silly mistakes. Where's my cursor? There we go. So 2 times 0 0.07, 0 0.14, uh, 3 times 0 0.12, 0 0.36, 4 times 0 0.33, 132, 5 times 0 0.3, 1 and a half, and 6 times 0.18 is 1.08. So there we have all of our weighted values, so our values of s weighted by the relevant frequency. Now we just have to apply this summation sign, we just need to add all of those together. And so we'll start at the bottom, I've already got 1.08 uh, in my calculator. So we'll move up from there, plus 1.5, plus 1.32, plus 0.36, plus 0.14, and I get a value of 4.4. 4.4, so that's my expected value of S. Now we don't actually need that uh, for the to, to respond to one of the questions, that's just an intermediate step because now we're going to be calculating this variance. All right, this is x plus y, which is our variance of s. And the, the, the formula, again, it's the same. The letters are different, but the nature of the calculations don't change. This is the difference between specific values of s times, or sorry, minus the expected value of s squared, multiplied by the relevant frequency and add it all together. So our next step here, we'll calculate uh, these differences. We already have our expected value. So now we'll just go through these differences, s minus the expected value of s. So that's going to be this column minus this expected value. So let's get on with it and move this out of the way over here. So our first calculation is 2 minus 4.4, so minus 2.4, oops, let me get my pen back here, minus 2.4. Our next one, 3 minus 4.4, minus 1.4. This one, of course, is minus 0.4. The next one, we're down to 5, minus 4.4.6. And 6, our last value, minus 4.4, 1.6. Okay, so now we have those differences. The next step is to apply that square root sign. Sorry, not square root. We're going to square them, not take the square root. So now we have these differences. Now we're going to square all of those. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. 2.4 squared is 576. Our next one, 1.4. Oops, 1.4 squared is 196. Point 
four squared is point sixteen. Point six. Whoops. Point six squared is thirty six. And finally, one point six squared is two fifty six. So now we have all of our differences squared. Our next step, we apply this relative frequency. So now this is going to be those deviations squared times that frequency. So that's going to be, let me find a highlighter here, that's going to be this column multiplied by this column. Oh, let me get that out of the way. You can put it here. So the first calculation is 5.76 times 0 0.07. So 0 0.40. And next, 1.96 times 0.12. To, uh, point two four and oh, where did my calculator go here? There we go. Uh, point sixteen times point three three point oh five. And next we have point three six times point three point eleven. And the last one, 0.18 times 2.56, 0.46. And now our last step, we apply this summation sign. So we just need to add all of these values together. So I'll start at the bottom as I've already got 0.46 in my calculator, plus 0.11, plus 0.05, plus 0.24 plus 0.4 equals 1.26. So that's our variance of S, which is our variance of X plus Y, 1.26. So finally, we can scroll back up here, and we have this is equal to 1.26. Okay, good. So we've got um, the next big step done. Let's, uh, let's move into E and F. Compute the covariance between price and quality. So this is now going to give us a measure of the degree of linear relationship uh, between our price and quality. So our formulas here, we've got all of the necessary bits of information. The formula for covariance our covariance, this is equal to the variance of x plus y, which we just obtained, minus the variance of x, minus the variance of y, all that divided by 2. So I'm just going to plug in our numbers, 1.26 minus uh, variance of x, we had calculated these numbers in the previous video, 0.49 minus 0.51, divide that by 2, and what do we have? 1.26 minus 0.49 minus 0.51, and divide by 2, we have 0.13. So there's our covariance. So we have a positive relationship. Now let's get some better idea of the strength of that positive relationship. The covariance can really take on any value. So as much as we can see whether it's a positive or negative relationship, it can be hard to interpret the magnitude of that strength or of that relationship. So the, the next step is to calculate the correlation coefficient, which is always bound between negative 1 and positive 1. If it's negative 1, it means it's perfectly negative uh, relationship. So one increases, the other decreases by the same amount. Or if it's a positive relationship, it's a, they both go up and down at the same time. 
if it's uh, zero, then no, no linear relationship um, between them whatsoever. So let's uh, let's get our correlation coefficient. So here, our formula is our covariance that we just calculated. So we'll denote it sigma x y divided by the product of the standard deviations of x and y. So there's the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. Now we haven't calculated these exactly, but we do have the ingredients. I know that, uh, let me get another color here, it's getting crowded. The standard deviation of x, well that's the square root of the variance of x, so that's the square root of 0 0.49, right? That's what we've already obtained here. The standard deviation of y, same thing, that's the square root of the variance of y, which is the square root then of 0.51, right? This is what we have here. So if we just plug in these numbers, that covariance we just calculated was 0.13 divided by Here's the, uh, put in a square root of 0.49 and the square root of 0.51. And let's just go ahead and calculate that. So there's 0.13 divided by 0.49 times 0.51 square root, close that bracket, equals 0 0.26. 0 0.26 final answer. There we go. So we have a positive relationship. It's not strong, but it's there. And it, that's sort of what we would expect, I would think, in this type of problem. We're looking at the, the relationship between meal price and meal quality. We would expect a positive relationship, which means that as the meals become more expensive, meal quality tends to rise with uh, price. So this was a really long, a long problem. We really covered off all of the different aspects uh, of these um, types of distributions, these bivariate probability distributions. Uh, so it was so long, I broke it into a few videos. Hopefully that helps um, clarify some of these points and uh, hopefully it wasn't too long and tedious to get through. Uh, if you did get through the whole video, thank you very much. I hope it helped. Okay, thanks. Talk to you later.